what did you do prior to 25, 25 years ago? So prior to the mid-90s, uh, I ran it as my father had, as a very linear monocultural cattle operation, the, the factory farm model. Mm. And what made you make a shift to the way you're doing it now? Would you call it the way you're doing it now regenerative agriculture? That's how you would describe it? Yeah, I would. You know, it's just a matter of days before big big food takes you know that uh, description away from us. But mm. you know, you, it was sustainable. It's been organic. Now it's regenerative and, and makes it be resilient. But it, it, it is a kinder, gentler agriculture. And it's an agriculture where everything works in symbiosis. Is that a safe thing to say? It's a, great, the, it's a great thing to say. The yeah, chickens I, grazing, the manure that the cows lay, everything goes back together. Exactly. The, it's, 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 we, we call it biomimicry, the emulation of nature. You know, it's a very imperfect emulation, but it's better and better. And it, it serves to restart the cycles of nature, which we broke through industrial farming, and, and make our living off the, the abundance that comes from properly operating cycles of nature. And did you go out on your own to learn this? If your father was a monocrop agriculture guy... And you, you, you developed the farm in this way. Obviously, it must have taken a lot of planning. So, how did you decide to make that shift, and what was the motivation? Okay, I, I'll give you the motivation first. Okay, you know, I, I was. Uh, so let me, I, I operated the farm very industrially, as my father did for the first twenty years. I graduated from the University of Georgia, College of Agriculture, with a degree in animal science, not animal husbandry. And I operated the farm uh, very industrially. By industrially, I mean I used a lot of technology. I mean, you know, we, we misapplied technology. We uh, haunt, grow, uh, some therapeutic antibiotics, ionos fours, uh, hormone implants. Hormone Horm implants. Yeah. How does that work? Uh, you know, from an in endocrine point of view, you got to talk to somebody else. But, oh, okay. but, but, but the way it works is uh, you can buy hormone implants for cattle and you actually give little, little pellets that you put in the skin behind their ear mm. and it causes them to grow faster and we uh, wow is that commonly used yeah uh, in, in the industrial model it's very very common to use it's a multi-million or billion dollar industry wow so they give the cows extra hormones so the cows get larger and they try to feed them quicker and they're feeding them mostly green to get them fat Correct, which is a, a very unnatural feedstuff for a ruminant animal. Yeah. Uh, that's a fascinating thing, isn't it? Because so many people like green-fed steaks. They like that real fatty thing and that if you give them a grass-fed steak, it's almost like, hmm, this is interesting. It tastes different. Like, they're not accustomed to it. It's a little chewier. It's a little it, different. It, it is. And, and, you know, we we never market our product by saying... This is the most tender steak you've ever put in your mouth. Right. I hear, I hear, I hear grass-fed producers say that, and I wince because they're setting an expectation we can't get to. Well, you it's know. also we have to look at the reality of why that animal is so chewy or it's so easy to chew. It's because it's got no, like, the the body is unhealthy. It's, got, it's, it's there's so much fat in the system that the body's marbled with fat. Like if that was a human being and you saw it, like that person would be sick. Like, if you look at one of those cows that's, like, completely infused with fat, if that was your body, you'd be like, wow, I might need to get myself together because this is not good. This is not a good look. A feedlot cow is an unnaturally obese creature that would yeah. never occur in nature. Never. 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 Yeah, yeah, so, uh, a, a, a bull or heifer that I slaughter would be two years old. Uh, it would weigh live weight 1,100 pounds. It would have uh, two or three tenths inch of back fat, and if I gave it, if I the, if I gave that animal a, pr a a presidential pardon and said we're not going to slaughter you at two years age, they would live to be uh, twenty something years old probably. That's the normal life expectancy of a cow. 
contrast that to a feedlot animal that would that would that would uh, yield prime or choice, they would be probably sixteen to eighteen months of age, not two years. They would probably weigh thirteen, fourteen hundred pounds, not eleven hundred. They would have three quarters of an inch of back fat. And while I have not done this, I would be willing to bet you that if you left that animal in the feedlot, gave it that same presidential pardon, it wouldn't live much over another year or so. It's, you know, you're, really? you're, you're eating a naturally obese creature that would never occur in nature and is, is slowly dying of the same diseases of sedentary lifestyle and obesity that kill most of us. So you're saying that a cow that's get, uh, with a grain-fed diet before they slaughter, they just let it live. It would only live a year or so longer than that. And, you know, I don't have. Yeah, I, that's my bet. You know, when uh, when the during the pandemic panic, when the uh, packing plants were closed down, they were euthanizing chickens and hogs, particularly because they couldn't they couldn't slaughter them, so they euthanized them. Now, I own my own packing plant, and we never shut down. That's, that's a sign of resilience. But if I had, I wouldn't have euthanized anything. They'd been fine. They would have kept eating, but they'd been fine. And you would have gone right back to the natural cycle two years later if you had to shut down for that long? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we would have just, just kept accumulating animals in the in the pasture like, until I could open my packing plant back Now, up. why did they have to euthanize the animals? Because they didn't have the resources or because the animals weren't doing well? Like, what, what, why, euthanize, to me, when I hear euthanize, I think something's wrong. Like, you gotta, you gotta put them down because they're sick or there's no room for them. Or, why are they doing that? You know, I would say it's because, uh, you know, those are confinement animals that live in very expensive confinement facilities and they, they had nowhere to go with them. They're, that's hard to deal with. That's just hard to imagine that life becomes uh, that invaluable. That you could just decide to euthanize them all. No one's, no one's going to buy them. We're just going to kill them all. I think that's what happened.